It's been rather fashionable for our contemporary Western society to claim that race is just a social construct, with prominent magazines and organizations publicly declaring it as such. And in response to that, I have decided to record my own video addressing that in an objective manner, in which I will address the most prominent arguments of the social constructivists regarding race and I will evaluate them subsequently offering the real explanations regarding race and whether it is a social construction or not. And believe it or not, uh, there is some legitimacy behind saying that race is a social construct, as race is just another human invented word used in order to categorize an objective reality, just like a chair, color, electric current are used to describe things that are objectively real. All of those things would exist independently of our social perception and categorization of them, and to the same extent is race. And to say that our usage of the word race is a social construction is in no way our mutually exclusive to race's biological existence, and in this video I will show you how by debunking the most common arguments of social constructivists. And to start with, one should identify the assumptions and goals of people who prefer to see race just as a social construction with no connection to biology. And it so happens that we're living in a society that assumes total egalitarian and equality between groups of people because they're very afraid of discrimination, and as a result they are oppressive towards people who tend to deviate from that view of reality and find that there are indeed group differences among people. We're also living in a society that assumes that whatever has to do with race that is not sputed by some social constructivist is racist and should be immediately banned and investigated through race critical theory or some other bullshit theory. So research on race and intelligence, as an example, is dealing with tremendous amount of difficulties in publishing despite having an overwhelming supporting evidence. However, this video is not going to be about race and intelligence at all, but about race as a biological and social phenomenon. And I will start by proving the social pressures that exist for viewing race as a social construction. According to Katarina Kajitska, 2009, and I quote, the survey shows that the views of anthropologists on race are sociopolitically influenced and highly dependent on education. And if you look at the graph that she provided, people in Eastern Europe are far more likely to view race as a biological phenomenon than people in Western Europe, because they don't have the social pressures or political correctness to conform to, unlike the West. Similarly is the situation in China, where 100% of scientists view race biologically and do not question its validity. And that just shows how power relations shape the view of academics and in our society, power has generated a false view regarding race and in this video I will debunk the most fallacious assertions that are made by dishonest actors regarding human biodiversity. And the first argument is that race was apparently designed in order to oppress black people and prove that whites are racially superior, therefore we should discourage race research. This argument is very popular among certain cultural leftist circle that subscribes to race critical theory. Unfortunately for them and even white supremacists, our current scientific advancement does not prove white superiority and recognizes that certain races have comparative advantages in certain modes of living over the others, due to the conditions under which they had evolved and this process in the past 10,000 years has accelerated by around 100 times. Moreover, to the largest survey of experts on black and white IQ gap, of which by the way 84% of experts agreed that partially it has to do with genetics, 82% of the surveyed did not think that studies on race and IQ will lead to discrimination, despite this survey having a large liberal sample. The next argument is that race is an arbitrary category with no clear distinctions in between and as a result you can't make any valid predictions based on it. But the thing is, the same can be said about color, we don't know exactly where one color ends and where the second one begins. Similarly is with species categorization. The same can be said about racially mixed people or groups of people that are very similar genetically, such may be the Belgians and the Eastern French. 
However, we can identify a difference between a Scandinavian and a Nigerian just as we can identify a green color from a red color, because there is a significant distance in between. Moreover, what also proves its validity is its application in other spheres of life, such as health and even silly things like ancestry testing that I have also undergone through, and if you're interested in seeing my results, stay subscribed to this channel as they will appear sometime in March. If we exclude the label Asian, which includes many people who come from the continent of Asia, including Indo-Europeans and Dravidians, then the validity and subsequent accuracy of those results are remarkably high wherever they are used, that is over 99% accuracy, only proving the notion that the word race accurately represents biological ancestry and self-reported racial categorization, excluding of course transracial people like Sean King and Rachel Dolezal. And if we reject the notion that race is biological, then we put in danger millions of people who use regularly medical supplements that are designed to work on their ancestry. Not even speaking of specific racial inheritances, such as red hair for example, or things that are present in one race overwhelmingly more than in the other, such as lactose tolerance and blue eyes, which closely aligns with people who have an Indo-European ancestry, and especially Northern European ancestry, which by the way is not just Scandinavia for those of you who don't know. The next argument is also known as the Lewontens fallacy, which argues that there is more similarity within races than between them, therefore racial classification is not supported. And on the surface, this is an okay argument to make if humans had only one gene or something. When you account for more genes, then this argument falls on its head. Not to mention that it also falls on its head when we apply it to other animals, with recognizable subspecies, which totally disregards this argument and even makes it a dog whistling argument. And if you want a clear illustration why it is ridiculous beyond that, you should watch my video on race that will be in the description below, as this is the second one. But thankfully, modern biologists are not even using this method for classification, nor it was ever relevant for classification purposes. And soon it will be remembered as pseudoscience, just like all the works of Franz Boas and co. In our contemporary reality, most experts and researchers use the correct method of measuring genetic distance. And the findings are the following. The genetic distance between bonobos and chimpanzees is lesser than the genetic distance between Bantu and the English, not speaking of Bantu and the Aborigines, which sits at over 0.3. In addition, I'll quote you a summary of the literature of another study which says the following. Homo sapiens and so-called Homo erectus, living about 0.3 million years ago, about the same time Homo erectus is alleged to have disappeared, the distance between them as determined from the mean of 16 distances may have been around 0.19. This is about equivalent to the estimated genetic between living sub-Saharan Africans and Eurasians of 0.2%. This overlaps the range of distances for living humans with the lowest estimate identical to the distance between between Bantu and Eskimo, and it all makes sense considering that our evolution has Parts accelerated by around a hundred times in the past 10,000 years. But to make it absolutely clear, one individual from a certain population is never more similar to another individual from a different population. In fact, our racial differences are always downplayed and are underestimated. Finally, the most annoying argument that I have ever heard is that race is apparently just a different skin color. The argument goes like this, it is just a different skin color that people are obsessed over. If we were all brown or purple, then perhaps we would all have the same traits and physiology and all of our other differences will not be noticeable. Unfortunately, this is the most common argument people I've seen over the internet are repeating like idiots while the previous three are at least supported by people who are somewhat familiar with the discourses surrounding race. Now, in order for this video to be short, I'm not going to details into listing the muscle, bone, blood types, the brain types and brain sizes, and even different bacteria that are race-specific, because the information on that regard is plenty of. Instead, I'll just cite two studies that should debunk this notion of completely and encourage people to learn about our human diversity more. 
Firstly, is that 84% of our genes are expressed in the brain, and second, the genes that influence our skin color are not really quantitatively significant, nor really are relevant that much anyways. So the notion that race researchers obsess over skin color is absolute nonsense and frankly should be demonument to the ignorant low IQ society in which we are living in. Anyways, that was all for today. I did not mention that some Europeans were not considered as white in America, but then they were, because it has nothing to do with biology of those people and has everything to do with American ethnocentrism and their specific culture, and you can argue that in this case there is an element of social construction, however it was purely cultural, not biological, so don't see how it is relevant in this video. My concluding remarks are that, whether we label the ancestral differences of groups of people as race or species or subspecies or ancestry groups or kin groups or population groups is relevant to the actual phenomenon that those words represent and this phenomenon is absolutely real as you would not find a single researcher that would disagree with the notion that there is an element of biodiversity between different populations and this element can grow larger or smaller depending on which group one is comparing. If you demand a more hardline definition for race, go ahead and demand it and maybe one day we'll use some other word addressing it. But ask yourself this, why are you not demanding a concrete definition for continents, taxonomy, species, planets, asteroids, color and other natural phenomena whose labels are to an extent loose? Eventually you will come to the conclusion that a this is the reality of our language and b you are being a hypocrite. Now that was all and thank you for watching.